In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age all ages. Amen. <clears throat> Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Tooth, and as uh, when Daniel mentioned last week, um, this month is focused, not just this month, but actually um, the first few months focuses on the love of God. <clears throat> as we say in the end of the Divine Liturgy, when the priest blesses the people, he says, the love of God the Father, the grace is only begotten Son of Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion, gift, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. <clears throat> so we can actually divide the year in the Coptic calendar into these three parts. The love of God the Father, the grace is only begotten Son, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so uh, this, this week we see the Lord discussing with the the lawyer who comes to him and asking what he must do to inherit eternal life. Also in the gospel, there's a similar uh, dialogue between the Lord and the rich young ruler, uh, also about the kingdom, <clears throat> but with more detailed um, uh, dialogue. But so we're not sure if it's the same, um, it's the same interaction or there is another person. But anyway, in the gospel of today, the Lord test, the, is tested by this uh, lawyer asking, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And the Lord, in his wisdom, um, he responds back to him asking, well, what do you think? Uh, and, and because as a lawyer here, he studied the law of God. He studied the Old Testament. And so he knew what scripture said. Uh, and he responded well with a uh, reference from Deuteronomy about loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, <clears throat> and loving your neighbor as yourself. And actually, these are kind of a summary of the Ten Commandments, which were divided into two categories, love for God and love for your neighbor. <clears throat> and so he answered well. Um, and this lawyer, though, you could, in the eyes of the world, he had it all. Um, he had wealth, knowledge, probably respect, um, <clears throat> and uh, but he went to the Lord for the wrong reasons. He went to test him as, as the, the fathers, or actually even St. Luke describes here. Um, but even though he went for the wrong reasons, he still found the glory of God. He still found the wisdom from the Lord. He still found the opportunity to repent and to change his life. <clears throat> so the lawyer knew a lot of things, but what did the Lord say to him at the end? Um, <clears throat> uh, he he rebuked him for for not his lack of knowledge, but his lack of applying that knowledge into his life. So, <clears throat> um, in in this passage, we kind of can div divide the the different um, parts into well, what was the goal? He had the right goal, seeking eternal life. Who is the teacher? He called him the teacher, which, which is God, the Lord Christ and the Holy Spirit. He knew the right sources. Actually, he didn't. He just said, he just said, what do I do to inherit eternal life? So um, some of the fathers explain this by saying, sometimes if we're only focused on the outward aspect of the scriptures or of the law or of the spiritual life, we feel something is still missing. We don't have a strong interaction with, with the Lord. We don't feel his presence. Um, and so one thing that we need to do is to go back to the law, to go back to the scripture. Um, <clears throat> and even after that, there's still a limitation because he knew, but he didn't act. Um, and I think for, for a lot of us, this is, this is the problem. Um, is that um, it's not about knowing what to do as much as doing what we know. Um, I'll say it again. It's not about knowing what to do, but about doing what we already know. As as St. Paul says, you're, al you're already full. You're already rich. Um, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We are, um, <clears throat> we are close to God, and God is inside of us. And we hear God's voice, and we know where to hear God's voice from. And we have the scriptures. Many prophets have, and kings have desired to see the things that we see and have not seen them. And to hear the things that we hear 
I have not heard them. So all the people in the Old Testament, they were just dying to, to see the Lord and to hear his words. And we have a plethora of his words um, and centuries of people who have been in touch with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so we have everything going for us, maybe even more than this uh, young lawyer. Um, and we know maybe even more than this lawyer knew, because he only had the Old Testament um, and even parts of it. But we have much more. We have the fulfillment of the Old Testament who is Christ and the New Testament and thousands and thousands of saints who have lived the life in Christ. <clears throat> so um, hopefully this is more encouraging than discouraging um, because like St. John says uh, to, to his beloved, I, I've written to you because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. So, so God has his power in us. <clears throat> and even in Deuteronomy, the Lord God through Moses, the prophet s said this to his people a few chapters later after um, he told them to love the Lord. He said, the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. So <clears throat> this is what the Lord commands um, the, the rich young lawyer of today, um, is that it's more than just doing stuff, but it's living a life. Um, and what's the difference? Um, the same thing when St. Paul describes in Scripture uh, the purpose of, of, of the Christian. Um, it's not just moving mountains. It's not just about <clears throat> feeding the poor, giving, even sacrificing your body to be burned, right? Um, if you don't have love, then there's no benefit what, whatsoever. Um, and some people say, yeah, faith is important. But even St. James says, faith without works is dead. Um, <clears throat> if if you just believe, but don't you live a life according to that faith, then you're not really believing what you're saying um, <clears throat> or what you're doing. Um, so one person will say, um, tell me what you believe. And another person will say, show me your life, and I will tell you what you believe. Um, so God is, is asking the second from us. Um, he's basing our faith on our life because what we believe that is what we practice. Um, <clears throat> and our goal is to practice as much. We already know what the right faith is, but how to do that, that's the difficult part. <clears throat> how to change or to transform the, the, the faith into life. Um, <clears throat> and we can't do that without the power of God. Um, and so that's why the Old Testament came up short. That's why this person who was an expert in the law couldn't, find eternal life, couldn't feel the comfort of God, couldn't accept the fact that um, there's something more that I don't have. Um, and so sometimes when we approach the church or scripture or tradition or the, the word of God in an external manner, um, as if as any other book or as any other lifestyle, then we come up short and we find there's something missing. God is missing. We, we took him out of the equation and, and studied scripture or studied um, the, the Christian life without Christ. And that doesn't make sense. Um, sometimes we do it unintentionally um, because maybe we're just focusing on doing. Even his question, what should I do to inherit eternal life? It's good in one aspect, but um, we can't just focus on the outside. Um, Sometimes we identify ourselves and label ourselves based on the job that we have or what we have accomplished or the grades that we have or how many friends we have or how much money we make. All of those things don't matter to God as much as the heart. Um, and, and are we doing these things with love or not? Even if we can move mountains, but we have no love. There's no, there's no eternal life. Um, <clears throat> so we have to have both. And that's why the Lord said to love him with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our heart. And uh, this is easier said than done, but we need the divine power to be able to love God and to love others in these ways. Um, so it's not just about doing acts of love, but truly loving the, the person we're doing these things for. 
Um, it's not just about feeling good about God or, or others, but putting your life on the line and living a life of love. And that's why um, St. Paul says, let all that you do be done with love. Um, that's a su summary of the commandments. Um, <clears throat> it's who we need to be, not what we need to do. Um, and the Lord was able to see this Lord and say, okay, you know what you need to do, but you're not the person you need to be. Um, that's why you need me. <clears throat> and so uh, God is saying to us today, it's a matter of the heart. Who do you love and how do you love them? Um, even when the Lord, remember when he uh, directs Simon Peter after he uh, denied the Lord three times, the Lord asked him, do you love me? Right? He said, yes, you know, Lord, that I love you. Then what he asked, he asked him to do things, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. Why? Because that's the response of the person who truly loves, is to do something. So sometimes we only focus on the doing or we only focus on the feeling but uh, or we only focus on the believing. They're, they're, all, they're all one in the same package. Um, <clears throat> and so when we feel that we're coming up short, then we have to look at the whole package and see, well, where am I going? Am, am, I love, am I not loving with my mind? Am I not loving with my actions? Am I not loving with, with my heart? Um, and so this is uh, a tall order but we have a big God uh, to grant us the power to do all these things. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, the Lord says, I know what you're doing. I know you're coming to church, you're reading the Bible, you're, you're confessing, you're taking communion. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, you, you cannot bear those who do evil, right? Just like the Lord um, directs in, in the book of Revelation to, to the church who still was not there yet. Um, he said, um, you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. So you're being diligent in, in the Christian walk. But don't forget your first love. Um, <clears throat> and uh, even a, a worse uh, directive that the Lord gives to, to the people around him at that time, he said, uh, I know you that you do not have the love of God in you. Hopefully that is not said about us. Um, but then he says, remember, therefore, where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Um, so that's the same thing he's telling the lawyer. Maybe the lawyer in the beginning had love for God. Um, but somewhere along the line, he, he just started to focus on the outside, on the, on the knowledge, on um, uh, looking like or doing the things without feeling the love for God. And so St. Basil um, tells us today, the love of God is not something we learn from someone else, um, nor has anyone taught us how to love the sunshine or defend life or love our parents, right? The, love is not something that we learn. He says, indeed, learning how to love God does not come to us from outside. Um, in the very commencement of the life of man, there's placed within us a certain seminal conception. So when God breathed into Adam and became a living being, and, and when we had our first breath of, of life, God placed in us this love. He said, having from itself the beginnings of a natural propensity toward this love. And so receiving the commandment to love God at once, from the first instant of our being, we possess the power to love. It's, it's the seed, but we have to water it, right? Water it with scripture, water it with prayer, water it with the, the holy mysteries, water it with, with um, desire to, to have this love grow and bear fruit. Um, and so that means we have, this is the mature love. <clears throat> um, I'll give one, one last example. Um, God wants our love to be well-rounded, not lacking anything, as we said. Um, imagine, you know, a couple uh, who, who has the true mature agave love, right? They've been, uh, but you can't, you can't only describe that love by saying, oh, they've been married for 50 years. That's not necessarily a sign. Maybe, maybe they've just learned how to live with each other, but they don't really have love. Okay, but but time also proves, right? Um, compared to maybe high school sweethearts, that's not that's not true mature love, right? <laughs> because maybe one person will say something, and then they're not with them anymore, and they go to someone else. That's not love. Right? That's um, that's not a sign of love. 
So mature love is not proven just because two people live under the same house or sleep in the same bed um, or because they made an official commitment to each other years before um, or that there's a ring on the finger. It's much more than that, right? Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, mature love is not equivalent to infatuation. Oh, I can't stop thinking about that. Yeah, that's good. That's loving with your mind. But um, that's sometimes that's if the emotion is there, but the commitment is not there, then it's not love, right? <clears throat> or, and it's, furthermore, mature love is not just based on simply telling someone you love them a hundred or a thousand times a day, but you're never there, right? We can't just keep saying to God, I love you, I love you, but we don't follow his commandments. Um, it's not just about uh, giving gifts, right? But not being there. Oh, I did this and I gave this. Yes. So, so when you put the whole package together, then you begin to understand what the true mature love is. But if you only have one thing, don't, don't expect that you're on the right path. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes we try to deceive ourselves into thinking that we have this mature love of God, whereas there's something lacking. There's always something lacking. Um, and so uh, even knowledge, like St. Paul says, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up, love edifies. Um, so it's not just about knowing God, like the lawyer of today. He knew of him, but he didn't love him. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's the question we, we need to ask ourselves, not just today, but maybe every day in renewing this, this um, commitment and this love and this um, marital life with our beloved bridegroom. Um, and on the day that we have perfected ourselves by the grace of God to the best of our ability, then he will take us to himself and we will live with him forever in his heavenly kingdom. Glory be to God now and to the church.